Hey folks, how's it going? Let's take a look at five Logic Pro tips that may well solve a problem for you and speed up your workflow in your next session. If you've got a massive session in front of you with loads of buses, it can sometimes be hard to keep track. Here's a little tip for you. On any track, when you want to find the location in the mixer of where that send is, for example, if I've got a bus that I know is probably something to do with drums, but I can't see it straight away, shift click on the bus send and Logic will highlight it for you. It'll do it for outputs too. Shift click on the output you want to know the location of, and even if it's not currently on the screen, Logic will flick over to it for you. Very helpful for when you're navigating large sessions, or maybe when you've had a Logic session come from elsewhere and the other person names things differently to you. When mixing, it's often helpful to use reference tracks. It's an important part of knowing how your mix will sit next to others. Here's the problem though. Unless you use third-party plugins as a reference platform, the reference track you bring into Logic is always going to go through your master bus processing, which kind of makes that reference irrelevant. So after dragging your reference tracks into Logic, send it to output three and four. Mute that output and then solo safe it by control clicking the solo button. This means that whenever you hit solo on that channel, it will be played through output three and four, which unless you've told it to do anything else, also goes to the master channel. So it comes out your speakers. If you don't have extra outputs because your interface only has two outputs, like some of the smaller Focusrite Scarlett series, there's a hack. Go to audio MIDI setup and create an aggregate device. If you want a full walkthrough of this using more than one interface at a time, you can check out my video at the top right now. Create an aggregate device using two audio devices, then make sure that the one you're actually using is selected first, making it the master, so your outputs in Logic stay the same. By doing this, you're essentially tricking Logic into thinking you have more outputs than you actually do. You're not using that device and the audio doesn't actually go anywhere else. It's just helpfully rooted internally for you to utilize for your reference track. In Logic Pro, you have a number of automation modes, but one that is sometimes overlooked is the region automation as opposed to the track automation. There are loads of times when this could be useful to apply automation to a region as opposed to on a track where it's applying the automation to whatever is on that track at that point in time. The most common use for region automation is when you have something that you're copying multiple times in a session, maybe a sample or a specific sound. By applying the automation to that region, whenever you copy this in your session, that automation will move across with it. There are ways to copy automation across a project within Logic, but this way really just saves a lot of hassle. I often see on Pro Tools sessions that people have track notes to give an explanation for what's going on on a certain track. Well, you can do it in Logic as well. Just go to the mixer, hit view, channel strip components and notes. Really handy for making a note of the settings you used on amplifiers or microphone polar patterns without clogging up your track name. These will also appear in the right hand panel if you go to notes, then track for a bit more detail. That little chain link in the plugin window always kind of confused me until I realized that it's actually a great way to speed up your workflow. For me, I love channel strips or plugin bundles that emulate the channel strip way of working like Slate Digital's virtual mix rack. If I have my channel strip in slot one of my plugin list and hit the chain link icon, that's gonna mean that whenever I select my next channel, it'll automatically go to whatever is in the same plugin slot on that channel. So keeping my channel strips in slot one means that keeping the chain link enabled and flicking between channels always brings up my channel strips. It's the same as if you've got some cleanup tools you always use first in your chain, you can flick between them with one click. Or if you use Logic Stop plugins, maybe keep EQs in slot one, compressors in slot two, then just by selecting the next channel, it will flick to that same plugin on the next channel. Hope that's handy for you. If you're struggling with anything in Logic Pro, leave a comment down below and let's see if we can solve it for you. Take care.